Hey, my name is Mike, and in this video, I want to go over the graphic, advanced, network, and sound options in WoW. I want to define what they do while providing examples, and when applicable, explain which piece of hardware an option is using. In doing this, I'm hoping that you have a better understanding of exactly what each option does, and for people using older hardware, decide which options you don't really care about. I've added timestamps in the description box if you're looking for something specific. If you're here to find out which options you can decrease to see the greatest increase in performance, you can start by making sure your resolution scale is 100%. Then change your anti-aliasing to FXAA or CMAA. If you're still looking for better performance, I would start by decreasing these options in this order before moving to others. Outline mode, view distance, shadow quality, liquid detail, ground clutter, and environmental detail. Starting with the graphics options, you have display mode. Display mode is just simply how you want the game to be displayed. Windowed provides a border around your game, allowing you to resize the game like you would a folder on your computer. Full screen windowed has the game play as if it were full screen, but you can alt tab to another screen and the game will still appear running in the background. This is great if you have more than one monitor and don't want to keep tabbing back in and out of the game. Anti-aliasing is a technique used to make the edges of objects look smoother and potentially, as a result, more realistic. From afar it may be hard to notice this, but if you're close to something and look at the outline of it, you may notice jagged edges. That is what this option deals with. The way it works is that where there is a line that is not straight, anti-aliasing will try and make it look smoother. FXAA stands for Fast Approximate Anti-Aliasing. It's a form of post-processing which is where the anti-aliasing is applied after each pixel is rendered. This is not very intensive on your hardware. FXAA blurs the edges of the image to make it look smoother. CMAA stands for Conservative Morphological Anti-Aliasing, and like FXAA, is a form of post-processing. It looks at the colors of edges and their patterns, and then blends them together to smooth them out. It's kind of like FXAA without the blurring. MSAA stands for Multi-Sample Anti-Aliasing, and it's a form of Spatial Anti-Aliasing, which means your graphics are rendered at a higher resolution and then downscaled for you to see. This downscaling is what provides the smoother lines. However, your graphics card is being put through heavy use because everything is being rendered at that higher resolution. MSAA only smooths out the edges of an image. It does this by taking a sample of what's around the edge and generating the average in the missing spaces, kind of eliminating that staircase effect. The numbers, 2x, 4x, and 8x, identify how many pixels around the edge will be incorporated into that average. Obviously, the higher the number, the more accurate the smoothing will be because there was more for the graphics card to consider. The AA setting you use firstly comes down to what hardware you have and what you're capable of. If you notice low FPS, double check to see if you're using a spatial AA setting. If you are, start by changing this to a post-processing setting. After that, it kind of comes down to personal preference. Some of the AA options make images look a little softer or more blurry, so might remove some of the details from the image. It's best to just play around and see what you can and cannot notice and then figure out which looks best to you. Resolution scale dictates the resolution that your graphics card will be rendering the screen in, but it will not change your actual resolution. So for example, if you're playing at 1920 by 1080 resolution and your resolution scale is at 100%, the screen is being rendered at the same resolution. If you increase the scale to 200%, your resolution stays the same, but your graphics card is rendering everything at double the resolution, so 3840 by 2160 or 4K. Bringing this above 100% will make your graphics card work harder and depending on your hardware, drastically reduce your FPS. However, if you can afford to increase this, the game will look more crisp and detailed the higher you go. For example, here's a 50% resolution scale, which is a 960 by 540 resolution that the game is being rendered at. It's blurry and does not look great. Now here's a 100% render scale. You see how it's much more detailed and easier on the eyes? Going past 100% continues to fine tune everything you see. Vertical sync synchronizes the frame rate of WoW to your monitor's refresh rate. If you get more FPS in WoW than the refresh rate of your monitor, you may experience screen tearing. Tearing is when your monitor briefly shows two frames frames at the same time. You'll most likely notice this when there's a lot of things happening on screen or if you move your camera quickly. The refresh rate of your monitor is the amount of frames it can display per second. So for example, if you get 100 FPS in WoW but you have a 60 Hz monitor with VSync disabled, you may start noticing tearing. With VSync disabled, your graphics card will use its full potential and try to output as many frames per second as it can. Enabling VSync will limit the FPS you can get in game to the refresh rate of your monitor. This will tell your graphics card to not render more frames than the monitor can display and eliminate tearing. Your monitor won't show a new frame until the last one has been completely rendered and output, but there's a couple downsides to enabling VSync. Firstly, the FPS cap it puts on you may actually be lower than your screen's refresh rate. So for example, you may drop to 30 FPS with a 60 Hz monitor. This can be due to the fact that your graphics card is unable to consistently render at a stable rate. An example of when this may occur is during a raid where it needs to render a lot of things on the screen, and the FPS drops to best match your monitor's preferences. However, this can potentially be fixed by using triple buffering, which I'll touch on during the advanced options section. 
Secondly, by enabling VSync, you may be introducing input lag. Because your graphics card is waiting for your monitor to display all the frames it's trying to send, you may notice that key presses or mouse clicks feel slightly delayed. Essentially, this happens because on frame 10, for example, you gave your system an input, but your monitor is still showing frame 3. Most of the time, VSync comes down to personal preference. Try playing with and without it and pay attention to how responsive the game feels to your input, and if you notice any screen tearing with it disabled. Also, with it disabled, keep an eye on your graphics card temperature to make sure it's not getting too hot. One more thing to keep note of is that if you have a FreeSync or G-Sync monitor and you can use the technology, make sure you disable VSync. The monitors will ensure they're communicating with your graphics card to give you the best frame rate possible. Texture resolution controls how much detail you see on a 3D object. When you look at an NPC, for example, and you see their clothing, their hair, and their weapons, all of that is the textured layer of the model. It holds all of the details. This layer has a resolution. The lower the resolution, the less details you can fit on it. Likewise, the higher the resolution, the more details you can add. Think of it this way. Low texture resolution is like watching a YouTube video at 480p. High texture resolution is 1080p. You can fit more detail in a 1080p video because its dimensions are larger and thus it has more pixels to work with. As you increase this, textures like armor look defined and less blurry from close up. Lowering this option will make the game use less of your memory. It can also shorten loading times. Texture filtering controls the image quality of things viewed at an angle. Higher settings make the transition between close and distant details less noticeable. Lower settings can make distant things appear blurry, or you may notice a distinct cutoff between where the graphics look good and where they don't. The numerical values coincide with the distance in which texture filtering is to be applied. Projected textures toggles the display of ground AoE effects like a mage's blizzard or raid mechanics. Regardless of your hardware, you should always enable this so you don't die to things you didn't know existed. View distance is how far in the background you can see terrain. If you lower this, the background will turn to fog sooner. This option uses your processor more than your graphics card, and lowering it can greatly increase your FPS. Environment detail is how far you can see objects like crates, rocks, fences, and trees. It's not the same as view distance, because view distance sets how far you can see in general, and environment detail sets how much detail you'll see in that distance. This also uses your processor more than your graphics graphics card and lowering it can increase your FPS. Ground clutter controls the quantity of small ground objects like grass and stones. Essentially, it'll add more scenery to your screen and make the scene look more lush. It also controls how many of these objects you can see in the distance, similar to how environmental detail works. Shadow quality defines how detailed the shadows in the game are. Increasing this starts to make them look more defined and less blurry. Also, the higher you have this, the more environmental objects begin to cast shadows. Lowering this can greatly increase your FPS. Liquid detail deals with all the water in the game. Increasing this will make water look better and more realistic. It will add reflections, ripples, trailing ripples when you move through it, and it'll become more transparent. Sun shafts are like god rays in real life. When the sun's light is partially obscured by clouds and beams of light poke through the cracks. This basically just adds a bit more realism into the game. You can see this in effect if you move your camera so that your mount is in front of the sun. You'll notice the sun shafts around the edges of your character. Particle density controls how detailed or how full something looks by adjusting how many particles are used for certain things. Essentially it makes any sort of visual effect such as fire, a weapon enchant, or spell casting look nicer. If you lower this, it can greatly increase your FPS. SSAO stands for screen space ambient occlusion and it uses your GPU, not your CPU. It was the first kind of ambient occlusion used in games. Ambient occlusion further decides how bright certain things should be and where shadows should be based on where the light is coming from and objects that are near each other that would cast a shadow. It helps lighting look more realistic at the cost of lowering your FPS. SSAO in particular looks at the depth of a certain pixel and the pixels around it and then draws shadows based on that information. These shadows are drawn in real time and are based on your perspective in relation to the object. Depth effects are so minor that even when I know what I'm looking for, I still don't really see anything changing. This option has to do with particle effects such as Mage's Frostbolt or a Warlock's Shadowbolt. It applies a fading effect or light refraction to the spells the further away they travel from you, which just adds some more realism into the game. Lighting quality controls lighting effects such as the reflections on the floor or on character models. It also controls how accurately lit certain places are, for example walls near a fire being brighter than the rest of the room. Outline mode dictates whether or not you will see an outline around your targets. It can help you pick out NPCs in more crowded areas. Now moving into the advanced options, triple buffering is a a potential solution to lower FPS you may be experiencing when you enable VSync. It uses more of your video memory to essentially store an extra frame and then feed it to your monitor to provide a smoother frame rate. Instead of your FPS dropping, these extra frames will be utilized to keep it consistently at the refresh rate of your monitor. The drawback of enabling triple buffering is that you may further increase the amount of input lag you experience. Reduce input lag does exactly what it says. I personally haven't noticed a difference with it on or off, but you may want to play around with this to see if you notice any input lag. Some people report lower FPS with this enabled, so keep 
keep that in mind as well. MSAA is automatically set based on the anti-aliasing option that you selected. If you're not using MSAA, this will be set to none. If you're using MSAA 2x, this will then be set to 2x. If you change this to 8x, then your anti-aliasing option in the graphics tab would then also be updated to 8x. If you're not using any sort of multi-sample anti-aliasing option, then it doesn't matter if you enable or disable multi-sample alpha test because this won't ever do anything. If you are using this option, what it does is it looks at the pixels MSAA is working with and checks to see if they are solid or transparent based on a certain threshold. If the pixel is under that threshold, it is ignored as it's seen as invisible and anti-aliasing is not applied to it. Enabling this could help certain things like trees and bushes look better if you're using MSAA. If you're already using a post-processing type of AA, the post-process AA setting will already be set. However, if you're using a spatial AA option, you can come here to add a post-processing AA as well. This just combines two forms of anti-aliasing to enhance the game's graphics. But in doing this, your hardware may be working harder. Resample quality is only relevant to you if your resolution scale is above or below 100%. Essentially, this option dictates the filter that is used when you upscale or downscale the game without actually changing your resolution. The difference can be minimal and hard to see, but using the incorrect filter can make your game look a bit blurry or cubey. If your resolution scale is below 100%, you'll want to use bicubic for better quality. If it's above 100%, you'll want to stick with bilinear. If you want to see a more noticeable difference, try comparing either of the two options versus the none option. You'll be able to see reduced quality in details especially on the edges of objects. Graphics API is where you can select whether you want to run WoW with DirectX 11 or 12. DirectX is used in almost every video game today and essentially it's a library of tools that game developers use to create their game. It makes game development easier as instead of creating a game for every single system specification that can run the game, developers create a game that speaks to DirectX and then DirectX talks directly to your system hardware to tell it about the details in regards to the 3D graphics or sound that the game creates. The difference between 11 and 12 is that first Firstly, DirectX 12 requires Windows 10 and a video card that can support it. Secondly, the differences have more to do with efficiency. DirectX 12 has the ability to minimize some of the computing required by your processor by giving that workload to your graphics card. Depending on the physics interaction setting you use, you, other players, and or NPCs can affect the physics within the game or have physics on you affected. Blue posts on the forums say this has to do with dangling bits of belts and weapons and how they move, but after a lot of testing, I never saw any changes regardless of what the item was and the setting I used. However, However, you can see that this lamp in Valshara, for example, is affected by the setting that I use. As my character moves through it, the lamp does or does not move. As of right now, my guess is that this option only applies to very specific items, and if I were to wager a guess, it applies to more than just belts, weapons, and lamps. UI scale allows you to increase or decrease the size of your user interface. This can be helpful for people who are visually impaired or just like a larger or smaller UI. Max foreground FPS sets the maximum frame rate the game will go to when it is in the main window that you have open. Max background FPS sets the maximum frame rate that the game will go to when it's in the background, like if you're browsing the internet with the game open. Contrast is how dark dark things are and how bright bright things are. If you crank your contrast to 100, everything will look more bold and dark, and that's because you've greatly decreased how bright the bright things are. If you lower your contrast to zero, everything will look washed out and dull, and that's because you've greatly decreased how dark the dark things are. Brightness is how bright or dark the game is overall. It has a similar effect to contrast, but does something different, as it affects the entire image on your screen as a whole instead of focusing on highlighting or bolding the light and dark areas. Gamma increases or decreases color intensities, so everything in between black and white. It helps distinguish different shades of similar colors. The next tab is the network options. If you enable optimized network for speed, this increases the responsiveness in certain situations like raids or battlegrounds by allowing more information to be transferred on your network. This makes WoW use more of your available bandwidth for the game. Make sure before you enable this you understand that if you're on a low tier internet package with unimpressive upload and download speeds, this probably won't ever be a good option for you as your available bandwidth will already be low, so trying to allocate more bandwidth to WoW will just cause issues. If you have this enabled and you notice you're lagging or disconnecting in instances a lot, try turning it off and see if your issues go away. Moving on to enable IPv6 when available. IPv4 is the fourth version of the internet protocol that's been around since the 1980s and it's the most common form of obtaining an IP address such as 192, 16811. There's only a finite amount of these IP addresses that can be handed out to everyone, around 4 billion and we're actually starting to run low. However, IPv6 has existed since the late 1990s and it's obviously a new internet protocol that contains about 340 undecillion IP addresses. That's 340 followed by 36 zeros. The addresses also look different, something like this. 
Despite being around for about 20 years at this point, it's only been in the last decade where IPv6 addresses have become a bit more common. Whether or not you have an IPv6 address is up to your internet service provider and if they have been assigning addresses to their customers. If you check this option and you don't have a v6 address, you'll be able to see that so it's best you just leave it disabled to ensure you don't run into any connection issues. If you do have a v6 address, you can try enabling this to see how it runs. It should be faster and provide better latency, but in the past this option has given some users connection issues. Advanced combat logging provides more details in your combat log which can be critically analyzed. You can export and analyze these logs to places like Warcraft logs or other logging websites. Some of the details advanced logging adds is the item level of the raid, rankings, and replays. And then finally we have the sound options. Pretty much everything you hear is a sound effect. Footsteps, spell casting, the sound of your hearthstone, mount noises, the sound you hear when you're invited to a group, your fishing bobber are all examples of sound effects. Enable pet sounds is an option for classes that have pets such as hunters or warlocks. It just toggles whether or not they make noises when they aggro something or when you go AFK. <laughs> Emote sounds are associated with stuff like slash laugh, slash cry, or slash sorry. If you don't want to hear these emotes, you can turn this off. Keep in mind that in order to hear emote sounds, you must enable this option in addition to the dialogue option a few settings below this. If you want to consistently listen to music in-game, you can enable the loop music option. Otherwise, each music track will play and then end until you've done something like enter a new zone that queues up the next track. Pet battles have their own music which you can enable or disable. Ambient sounds are the background noises you hear in games such as storms, wind, birds chirping, water flowing, and the atmospheric sound of each zone. The dialogue option turns on or off speech sounds, so like when an NPC talks to you or just talks in general. This also includes emotes like slash cry and slash laugh. Okay, let's move out! Get into your machines! I'll speak to you from here via the radio! You'll probably always want to just turn error speech off. If you leave it on, you'll consistently hear your character say things like It's still recharging. It's not ready yet. I can't use that item yet. It's still recharging. Sound and background allows you to keep sound on while WoW is not the primary window. This can be helpful for when you want to hear a cue pop while you're browsing the internet, or if you're finding help for how to do a quest and you start getting attacked. If you enable reverb, this may help with immersion as it'll add an echo to the sound when it makes sense. For example, your footsteps will echo in a large hall. Distance filtering may also help with immersion as it makes sounds more realistic when it comes to the distance of the source of the sound. For example, if you run past a waterfall, you would hear it get louder as you approached it and then quieter as you moved on. With this disabled, you would just eventually start to hear the waterfall and then it would stop once you get past a certain point. Think of this option like a plane in the sky. You start by hearing nothing, then you faintly hear a plane off in the distance and it gets louder as it gets closer to you. When it flies over you it's the loudest, and then as it flies away from you the sound slowly fades back into nothing. That's what enabling this option will do. Sound channels dictates how many sounds you can hear at once. Think of it like a tunnel. The larger the tunnel, the more cars you can fit through it. The same way that the more sound channels you have, the more sounds you'll hear. Nowadays the high setting shouldn't be too strenuous for people to handle, especially people with a dedicated sound card. But lowering this does take a little bit of a strain off of your processor in case you wanted to improve performance a little bit and you do not have a sound card. When sounds are cached, some part of them or even the entire sound is stored into memory. The next time these sounds are required and accessed, they don't need to load up entirely anew. They pull from the sound cache, which is like a memory. This way the sound can begin immediately when it's accessed while the rest of the sound is being loaded from your hard drive. Having a larger cache allows you to store more sound to memory and thus speeds up certain things like loading into a new zone when all the new sounds appear. So this was a video going over the graphic, advanced, network and sound options in WoW. Whether you're someone like me who was just interested in this stuff in general in terms of what it did and what exactly I was supposed to be seeing with each option, or you're someone who has older hardware and is looking for ways to improve your performance, hopefully this video was educational for you. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know down below in the comments. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider following me on Twitter. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.